Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of God. Praise his holy name forever. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We bless you for your presence and divine nature in this time of deceit and delusion that's so magnified upon the face of the earth in this hour. As you see, just like the Word of God says, brothers and sisters, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the, right before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Violence is covering the face of the earth. You see nothing but murder, violence, hatred, betrayal, everywhere. You know, it, it, now they'll use this thing with the guns for gun control. That's no big deal. Gun control. Uh, knife control. I mean, just, just for the past few weeks, people have been butchered by knives, killed by knife attacks, cut up into pieces. Yet they don't hear no, nobody talking about banning knives, yet they want to ban guns, which is fine. As far as that goes, as far as what the world's doing, they ain't, gonna, they ain't going to achieve peace. By peace, so they destroy many. It's like uh, these messages about Ralph and Jay, Ralph Stair and James Rice. By peace, they're destroying many people throughout the world. And they continue to do so. But I'm going to continue on here with these uh, messages as God puts in my heart to talk about in this one here, now I'm going to uh, focus on, again, if a ruler hearken on to lies, then all his servants are wicked. All right. Um, If a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. That's pretty clear. Uh, now we're going to let you hear some lies out of the mouth of the greatest false witness there ever was, Ralph Gordon Stair. I believe on the pattern of the Apostle Paul is being fulfilled in me. Wow. The only pattern of the Apostle Paul that, is being, that was being fulfilled by R.G. Stair was where he was injurious and blasphemous and an unbeliever because that's what R.G. Stair was. He was an unbeliever. He wasn't a believer in Christ Jesus. He was an unbeliever. He played the religious game. Let me see if I have that one here. Let me see if I could find that. Uh, what he said back in 2008. Listen to this. Help communities all over this nation. We have missionaries all over the world. We pay radio, but we all know body anything. I made the commitment to God. I said, God, you can go to hell if you think I'm going to keep on playing this religious game for you. I ain't going to lie for you, God. Boy, he, he liked that. He liked that. He said, I, want, I want somebody who won't lie. Well, I can't talk to God like that. Why not? Because he was a liar. That's why he talked to God like that. I'm not going to play this religious game for you anymore. I'm not going to lie for you. That is the truth about a liar right there. He, Ralph Stair was playing a religious game his whole life. That's why he ended up the way he did. None of his words, they all fell to the ground as far as the coming of Jesus Christ. Because remember, people, that's exactly what we're talking about, the coming of Jesus Christ. Uh... And the man of God spent his life getting the people ready for the coming of the Lord. Are we not going to be ready? Are we going to dishonor him? Wait a minute. Are you going to dishonor him? Uh, they already did dishonor him by, by not believing what he said about Jesus coming back within six months of his death last year or going before the Pope of Rome or the seven thunders, which we'll get to in another segment. When I'm ready, I'll do like Paul. I'll let you all know. I will. I'll say I'm ready now. And folks have been listening to me the last couple months to hear me. They already hear me starting to say that. They've already heard me start to say, I'm about ready now. I'm 
about ready now. I got one more journey, one more place to go, and off comes my head. Uh, that was back in 2008 when he was in Ohio. What did James Rice say? And the man of God spent his life getting the people ready for the coming of the Lord. Are we not going to be ready? Are we going to dishonor him? Uh, yeah, you already did dishonor him as far as if, if you call that dishonor by not hearkening to the lies that he spoke by lying about his lies. And after my departure, after my departure, Jesus coming. After my departure. You say, I don't believe that. Be my guest. Well, the truth is, uh, what did James Rice go on to say about the end of the matter? And I don't know specifically the end of the matter, but I'm purpose to stay to the end. Uh, let me let me reveal to James and all these other people out here what Ralph said about the end of the matter. When I'm ready, I'll do like Paul. I'll let you all know. I will. I'll say I'm ready now. And folks have been listening to me the last couple months to hear me. They already hear me starting to say that. They've already heard me start to say, uh, I'm about ready now. I'm about ready now. i got one more journey, one more place to go, and off comes my head. That was 13 years ago, people, when Ralph said this. But he, he said this kind of statements over and over again. These are the kind of messages that should be going out over the Overcoming broadcast because of the fact that it's, it's dealing with the coming of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is coming in your lifetime. Prepare to meet your God. Well, I can guarantee you, Ralph Stair wasn't prepared to meet the Almighty God. There's no doubt about it. And after my departure, after my departure, Jesus coming. After my departure. You say, I don't believe that. Be my guest. Uh, James. And I don't know specifically the end of the matter, but I'm purposed to stay to the end. Uh, Ralph just declared what the end of the matter was, as far as that goes. But, you know, we, we think we know what's going on. And uh, for a period, there was much talking about what was happening and what God was doing and what was wrong here and what was wrong there. But as time went on, uh, the talk became less. Thank God. Yeah. Amen. 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 Because uh, we figured out that uh, we don't know. We don't know. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow. And they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Wow. All right. If I die like any other man die, then I have not been sent from God. Many have heard by the letter what the prophet said because he spoke the word of God, but have not yet heard what the spirit said. What did the spirit just say? What did Ralph say by the spirit? If I die like any other man die, then I have not been sent from God. Well, brothers and sisters, the spirit of truth will tell you that what he just spoke there was truth. If he dies like any other man dies, he has not been sent from God. So that means that everything the man ever did was not of God. Anything. Everything. Hey, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. And, and, and Ralph had a whole lot more than a little leaven, brothers and sisters. He will make a people ready for the coming of the Lord. With a message like a refiner's fire and a fuller soap, he will purify the sons of Levi. See? Ralph, ran, ran, he ran with that saying for many years. But yet, he went purifying the sons of Levi. He's not the messenger of the covenant. Never once heard me backtrack on the fact that I am the messenger, and that I am the sign. Yeah, he's the sign, all right. And he's the messenger, a messenger sent by Satan to buffet the saints. That's about it. 
the messenger of and the sign. Yeah, he's the sign of the coming of Jesus Christ. The sign that comes before Jesus comes. Uh, 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 lying signs and wonders. That was explained in Thessalonians chapter 2. What in the world has God wrought? What is God doing? Well, I'm telling you what he's doing. He said in the book of Malachi, I will send my messenger before my face, and he will be the messenger of the covenant. What he's actually saying there, the messenger of the covenant or the coming of Jesus Christ, or else there was not, never will be, the messenger of the covenant as described in Malachi, because it's very clear in Malachi, it says he will be a swift witness against the adulterers and the sorcerers, not for them. Well, there was a swift witness for adultery, for fornication, for sodomite aversion, not against uh, I am a prototype of Christ in your midst. Wow. He's the prototype of Christ in our midst. You know what a prototype is? That's the forerunner. That's the example that Christ was made after, if you look at it like that. Jesus Christ was made after the image of Ralph Stair. If he's the prototype of Christ in our midst, or was, then he would have had to been Jesus Christ would have had to been made after his image and in his likeness. What a perversion of words, people. But, remember now. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. They're either spirit and life or death. Life and death. Uh, the spirit of life and death are in the power of the tongue. And that's why I fight all of these things that come. Because if it starts affecting the body, right. see, then I got to deal with it. Yeah, he, the only thing was is Ralph Stair affected the body of Christ with his perversion of lies. Especially his perversion of the coming of Jesus Christ. Come on, how, how far back do you want to go? First, you go back to 87, like I went to 86, where Ralph said that he, uh, uh, let me see if I got that right here. Well, there's all kinds of stuff I could use. It's just hundreds of things. Um, uh, I'm going to pass over that right now. Uh, I mean, as far as that goes, like I said, he said Reagan wasn't going to make it to the year 1987. Then in 1987, he said he wasn't going to make it to, and, and then in 88, he said he wasn't going to make it to the end. Plus, there would be a nuclear war. The economy would collapse. Uh, then he said Jesus was coming before the year 2000, no doubt in his mind. Then in the year 2000, or 1999, I was in the meeting when the, in Walterboro, South Carolina, when he said that he didn't say Jesus was coming not one time before the year 2000. And you hear me in the background, amen, prophet, amen. Because I didn't know, uh, whatever. I'm telling you, I thank God that he opened my eyes up to the truth and brought me out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Just like he done with Emmanuel Johnson and others. Uh, I believe in protocol, whether you like it or not. And I don't believe there's a man on the face of the earth. Wow, am I going to get in trouble for this one? That is higher in spiritual authority in the kingdom of God than I am. I don't believe that. I believe that I'm right there. And that they're going to move in the kingdom of God, they're going to have to deal with me. Now, I can hear myself in the background there. Amen, brother, amen. This was 1999 that came from. But like I said, we're going to have to deal with him, and that's what I've been doing with for the past five years. Dealing with the perversion of Ralph Stair. Because it comes down to things like this that Ralph said. You see what happened as I'm talking, she's so concerned about a cart that she's right in the middle of me talking, yeah. she goes and cries about a cart. So she wasn't listening to me, was she? 
And that's what irks me. When you folk find things to do that seems more important yes. than hearing the word come out of my mouth. Thank you, Father. And the Bible says you live by every word. Every. He's talk, Ralph's talking there. You live by every word which proceeds out of his mouth. That's what he was, that's, he's always said that. He said, the word of God's in my mouth. When did the word of God leave my mouth and go to yours? But actually that saying came from a false witness to a true prophet. When the false witness says, when did the spirit of the Lord leave me and go to you? When the, the man didn't even have the spirit of the Lord. But yet he said that to the true prophet of God. Uh, I'm waiting for that time. Go show yourself to Elijah. Just go tell me Elijah's here. What in the world are you folk really going to do when Elijah is manifest? It's going to be like a refining fire. Isn't that dramatic? What are you people going to do when, when, when Elijah manifests himself through Ralph Stair? See, that's what Dennis Larrabee in the perversion he's putting out, where he, he's, he's supposed to come back as Elijah now in 2024 and uh, take on Ahab and Jezebel. What a perversion. <laughs> but, hey, there, you, you know, people are under strong delusion. God put you there because you believe not the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. That's like James Rice. Uh, it just reminded me of that uh, James Rice falling in a pattern of his mentor, Ralph Stair. Oh, I'm familiar with all the hugging and smooching, and I. <laughs> that doesn't impress me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, no. We're, we like to give that, but we don't want to give what's required. That's right. What's required is believing the truth. Not believing a lie or then making lies about lies. But, uh, if there is one weapon that we do have that we can stop the influence of certain, we can avoid certain things. Now, this is from uh, an excerpt that I took from Brother Kirk. Oh, God, this is what happened with me and my wife in 2015 when we finally separated ourselves and then God was able to help us. To discern between him that serving God and him that serving him not, and from the righteous and from the wicked. Then shall you return, said in Malachi, and discern. We can separate ourselves Amen. and sanctify ourselves. And that's number that's one way. Right. You can begin to war. See, and that's why they don't like it. They don't like it when we separate ourselves. They don't like it when we come out from among them and be not partakers. Why? Because the first thing when you separate yourself. That's the first thing you begin to control and limit the input that a certain society has on you. And when you begin to limit the input, then you can very more carefully analyze the things that are coming to you and determine if this situation is something I want to affect me or I want to check out. See, that's what happened when I, I explained that demonic countenance on Ralph Stair when I left 2015. That demon in him knew that he had lost his authority over me. And I was able to, just like Kurt just said there, and any one of us, just like Emmanuel Johnson. Let me do that again, because that Emmanuel Johnson went through the same exact experience. See, there's one weapon that we do have that we can stop the influence of certain, we can avoid certain things. We can separate ourselves and sanctify ourselves. And that's number, that's one way you can begin to war. See, and that's why they don't like it. They don't like it when we separate ourselves. They don't like it when we come out from among them and be not partakers. Why? Because the first thing, when you separate yourself, that's the first thing you begin to control and limit the input that a certain society has on you. And when you begin to limit the input, then you can very more carefully analyze the things that are coming to you and determine if this situation is something I want to affect me or I want to check out. Yeah, that's the same thing that happened to anybody who got delivered from the stronghold of Ralph Stair in the Overcoming Ministry. They were able to analyze and 
discern what is true and what is false. I'm not a nice looking fellow, huh? but I'm a prophet of God. That's the truth. And I am the prophet for this generation. Why, is there any more prophets? Sure there are. And if you are a prophet and you're spiritual, then I want you to know that the things that I say are the commandments of God. Who dares to say something like that? Paul said it like that. Wow. So the things Ralph says are the commandments of God. Uh, all right, I'm looking for... That ain't in that section. Well, anyways, I don't need to play that right now. What it is, is I was looking for the, uh, um, where Ralph talked about people hold him to his words, boo-boos. He tries not to make boo-boos anymore because people hold him to what he says. Yet, he says he's the prophet for that generation. What? I'm not a nice looking fellow, huh? but I'm a prophet of God. That's the truth. And I am the prophet for this generation. Why, is there any more prophets? Sure there are. And if you are a prophet and you're spiritual, then I want you to know that the things that I say are the commandments of God. The things that he says are the commandments of God? Uh, how about all the things that he said about the coming of Jesus Christ, the Pope of Rome, dying at his that Pope's hands or whatever, or killed by somebody from the Pope? And then Jesus coming within six months. Were those the commandments of God? Uh, the point is, is that what comes out of the overcoming ministry. A sword is upon the liars, and they shall dote. A sword is upon her mighty men, and they shall be dismayed. That is nothing but doting and dismayment, being dismayed coming out of the overcomer ministry. But now we're going to a uh, section of things that Ralph said. And uh, let you hear these things that he said. Eyes and they see not. And ears Oh, it would be nice to see old Bird just come back over here, but he's not going to do it. And when I say that's going to make it even angrier than he is. Or Christopher. Or Chris. They don't consider us a warning from the Lord. Amen. Or Enoch. <laughs> you know what? No. A warning from the Lord? Uh, it must be one of those things that Ralph talked about. A commandment. The things that he spe speaks are the commandments of God. Now, this is what he talks about Enoch here. Enoch had nothing to do with going up on YouTube. I put an old message out from Brother Enoch because I listened to it, and it was relating as Enoch was ministering about the perversion of Ralph at the time back in 2009, and then I titled it the way I did. Listen to how Ralph, he, he's so deluded that he didn't even know what was going on. What Enoch did, he got himself on, on the YouTube. And he said, I got a message from Brother Stair from the Lord. Go to hell, Enoch. You see, the truth is, Enoch can't put no message up there like that. I did. But yet, this man's spiritual discernment, he's the highest of spiritual authority on the face of the earth, didn't even discern that it wasn't even Enoch that put it up there or titled it the way it was? I told you all along, you screwed up, boy. Amen. You don't have the authority, no. nor the message, Amen. and neither are you going to get the opportunity. Because Brother Stair's not going to listen to you. Period. 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 What a fool I'd be to listen to that. All right. The showdown, boys. Call on your God. Let's see who's still standing. I remember when Ralph popped off with that, that right there, what you said, showdown time. So then I put out, all right, it's showdown time. And I put out two message or three messages called Showdown at that particular time about the perversion of Ralph. 
in the showdown time. Let's see who's standing. Let's see here. Uh, let's see who's standing now, Ralph. He always used to boast, oh, God, give me longevity. Yeah, you're going to have longevity in hell. Ain't no doubt about it. His life is over. It's done. But listen to this. Where are they? Where are you? Christopher? Where are you, Stan? He started to say my name at the beginning, and he stopped. Then he said Christopher, and then he said Stan. Well, I'm right here. Christopher's still here in South Carolina. And uh, old Ralph is dead. In the, his body's in the grave, but his soul is in hell. And his spirit went back to God. Period. These are the things that I'm telling you, the perversion of Ralph throughout the years is, is what I'm dealing with here is, is uh, 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 let's, let's, let's go to this scripture before I carry on with uh, the words of Ralph and James Rice in, in between certain things. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. He basically has talking in perfection of the life and words of Ralph Stair right there. He speaketh a lie. Yes, that's what I, you'll hear. We'll keep continue on in this. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. See, that's, that's, I've been speaking truth for five years about the perversion of Ralph Stair, and the best he can do is, oh, Stan up there is running his mouth. Rah, 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 rah. But he couldn't actually come up with one scripture, not one, as far as the things I was presenting were wrong according to the Word of God. Neither can James Rice or Timothy Jones or Marie Spencer or any of these other wicked servants of Ralph Stair, because that's what they are. They continue on this day like they are. It says, if a ruler hearken on the lies, then all his servants are wicked. Who do you think they're serving? By continuing to go there and sit and listen to those messages in the building there of a dead man. Because that's what it is. Ralph Stair is dead. And he ain't, he ain't, he ain't dead like, like, like uh, God spoke to Joshua and said, Moses, my servant, is dead. No. Ralph Stair, the servant of Satan, is dead. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. See, that's very simple. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. That's pretty simple. We are of God. And he that heareth us heareth. He that heareth not us heareth not God. They're not of God. But just like Jesus said, uh, he says uh, right at the end of that in uh, John, where he talked about uh, you are not of God because you hear don't hear the words that God's speaking at this time. I mean, I, I, that is one of my favorite uh, scriptures. All right, let me do that one again because I really that one there. I remember when the Lord gave me that scripture. Uh, back in, I think it's in John chapter 8. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. See, for years, I confronted Ralph to his face about his lust, and the lust of his father the devil, but he never received it. He never received anything like that from any man. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Uh, you can't say it any clearer than that what Jesus just said about men like Ralph Stair. 
and because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. That's true. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. I don't expect the people on the Overcoming Farm, if there is anybody there that will be able to hear these messages somehow by the divine influence of God, it will be delivered. Otherwise, he that is of God heareth God's words. You, therefore, that hear them and you don't believe, you're not of God. It's as simple as that. Come on. You want to be like Link? Now, there's a fellow that Ralph was taking on, Link was taking him on or whatever. But listen to what, listen to what he goes on to say about Chris. A man that walked with Ralph for 40 years, and yet this is the kind of perversion that come out of Ralph's mouth. Come on. Come on. Here's the mic. Come on. Don't like it when I expose you to the rest of the world, do you? Yeah, Ralph didn't like it when he was exposed to the rest of the world. That's exactly what I've been doing for the past five years. As far as everything that God has me do. Well, well, I told you all along. I told people all along. I'm an adulterer, a fornicator, a blasphemer. I don't know if I've been a murderer, but come pretty close. He that hated his brother. I had to fight that. Oh, Chris is my brother. He turned out to be a liar. His testimony is invalid. No, Chris's testimony is valid. In fact, let me go to this screenshot here. There's Chris's testimony, brothers and sisters. Right there. Lo, it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him. And he will save us. That's not the testimony of a liar. Or else their testimony is a lie. Wow, this is the Lord. We have waited for him and we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. There you see Brother Chris, brothers and sisters. That's the true Brother Chris, not the perversion of Ralph Stair. Okay? Listen to what he goes on to say about Chris. I just asked a question to you folk. God, why did you saddle me with this? Why did you give me a friend like Chris? Who would do what he done? Well, the only one that I know he should be betrayed by brethren, wives, children, kinfolk, and friends. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. A friend. A friend. Huh? Ah, no betrayal there, huh? The only betrayal there was Ralph Stair betraying the cause of Christ and betraying the spirit of holiness and truth by betraying the spirit of grace. That's the only betrayal. See, that's why that D. Ralph used to gaslight people all the time about stuff like that. See, he's putting something on Chris that the man was actually doing. Ralph's adultery and his perverted lifestyle was a betrayal to the cause of Christ or the body of Christ any, at any time, any shape or form, brothers and sisters. Now, what I'm, I'm just... All right. I'm going down. Memory lane of the perversion of Ralph Stair that is backed up by men like James Rice and all the others. I remember some years ago, my good friend Chris, you know, 40 years, boy! And you, you're not going to trust me with that. I said, no, Chris. God told me not to receive anything from that and that. And I can still him say, does that mean me? So I said, yeah, Chris, from you too. So I'm not going to receive your judgment, your condemnation, yeah. your loud mouth, your money. I, gave, I started giving you money back before. Hey. See, but you hear what the actual thing, what he said there is not going to receive anything from Chris, who walked with him for 40 years, when Chris was presenting nothing but truth. It says, if an elder sin rebuke before all that others may fear, but even Chris has such a gentle spirit about him, he didn't have a loud mouth. Now, where Ralph got, see, that's what I'm telling you, Ralph made up another lie because Chris wasn't, I've never heard Chris to really be loud at all. But yet, there's another perversion of Ralph Stair talking about it. But just like it said, what, what Jesus said. Why do ye not understand my speech? 
even because he cannot hear my word. See, Ralph said, I'm not receiving anything from any man. That's because he couldn't, he, he, because he couldn't hear the words. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. See, that's pretty clear. That's exactly what Ralph Starr was doing. Uh, continuing in his life. Just like I said, he started out going to church looking for girls. He ended up with his main girl living with him. The whore of Revelation. Actually, when I get into the, the legacy of Ralph and Dennis and Rose, I will be using the scripture and name the most well-favored harlot who destroys families. And that's what Rose Larry has done throughout her years at the Overcomer Ministry. And she also increased the transgressions of men. All right, let's go on with Ralph now. Look at me, we've already thrown out. Right. Where are you, Stan? Where are you, Enoch? Where are you, Jonathan? Where are you, Where are you Christopher? Where are you? Where are you guys? See, he didn't throw us out. What a perversion of truth. He didn't throw me out. <laughs> See, I'm telling you, it's just, this stuff is just amazing, but people don't even care that, that, because he, he, doesn't that sound good? The people that, listen to that again. Look how many we've already thrown out. Right. What? what? Look how many we've already thrown out, and then he puts me, Christopher, Jonathan, and Enoch in that class? No. As far as I, I know about any one of those names he names here, we all left on our own accord. Where are you, Stan? Where are you, Enoch? Where are you, Jonathan? Where are you, Where are you Christopher? Where are you? Where are you guys? See, what a perversion. See, but it just goes on and on. All right, we're going to get back to James Rice again. There ain't no way Christianity is going to endure on this earth after my death. Wow. Oh. Uh, So to main, ma maintain my integrity, you know, I would always say, and I still do, standing fast with you, prophet. And the one reminder to all of you that Christ is alive and he's coming again. No, oh, did you hear what he said, though, right at the beginning of this? After his death. No way, Christianity is going to endure on this earth after my death. Wait a minute. A little while ago, I played all those things which I will do from time to time. Uh, after his death, within six months, Jesus is coming. So that means that by that statement, after his death, Christianity will not survive. There ain't no way Christianity is going to endure on this earth after my death. What? Uh, 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 there's no way that Christianity is going to endure after Ralph's death? You know, it's shameful when we play the broadcast 24 hours a day and we have radios in our pockets and, and all these things and we still don't hear what the prophet said. Wow. There ain't no way Christianity is going to endure on this earth after my death. Wow, what a statement. Remember now, those are the commandments of God. That's the commandments of God, what he said there now. Christianity is not going to endure after his death. Yet he said that Jesus is coming after his death. So wait, wait a minute now. You see the perversion of the mind? of a reprobate mind, like men like Ralph Starr or James Rice. All right, uh, for some reason I got this one right here. This is an amazing thing that old Ralph popped off about right before he died. Oh, the darkness in your eyes! Now, what this is, is taken from Romans uh, chapter 1. Okay, 
and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm looking for before I actually play it. What I'm looking for is the, uh, okay, I think I know where it is. I'm looking for the scripture in Romans. Maybe I have the wrong. Uh, okay. What I'm looking for is uh, I got my Bible thing on here. Okay. I had the wrong chapter. I always thought it was in Romans. I'm glad I looked it up. I always thought it was in uh, Romans. Uh, chapter 1, and it's actually in chapter 2. But listen to what Ralph says here about the word impenitent. I need to move you, you stiff neck. Hardness of heart and impenitent. When's the last time you read that scripture? When did you take time to... Find out what impenitent means. Now, Ralph's going to go on to, to let us know his divine revelation of what impenitent means when actually Paul talked about when he said, uh, talking about, listen to what Paul says in Romans chapter 2. He says, or despisest. Actually, he says, and thinkest thou this, O man, that thou judgest them would do such things? And do it the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God or despises you the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to pre repentance, but after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasures up wrath unto thyself wrath, treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. But listen to what Ralph says impenitent means. Stands out by itself, doesn't it? Sure does. It actually means a heart that repents. And he grieved him to his heart, so he impenitent. Wait a minute. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, you treasure up unto yourself wrath against the day of wrath? Uh, repentance is not even close to in, the word impenitent. But that's, I'm telling you, the reprobate mind, to talk like this, right before he died, Shows you this, the, the way that he died. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. That's the way Ralstair died. Let's go on now. You think you can prove to these people that I'm the man, not them, that even they can only be saved if they accept the authority that God gave me? Who said will not hear? See? If we're not going to be saved if we don't accept the authority that God gave him. And then he was going on to say, Whoso, whosoever will not hear that prophet, that soul, soul shall be destroyed from among the people. No, anybody that hears that prophet will be destroyed from among the people. And you, you believe the lies that Roger Stair has been putting out over the years and they still go out over the radio broadcast or the, or the ones that James Rice is continuing to give credibility to and anybody else there that, that that's involved with that ministry. It's the ministry of Satan, people. Not the ministry of reconciliation or the ministry of the coming of Jesus Christ as they proclaim it to be. Uh, I 
I want to be like old, old Mary. <laughs> so don't touch him, Mary. You, you know, uh, you, you, you don't, don't hug him. Do you people realize how wrong that is? That because we're so carnal in our mind that we can't take these physical things that God gave us to demonstrate my love. And after the same vein uh, that I mentioned and let you hear earlier, what James Rice said. Same kind of spirit now. Exact spirit. What you just heard Ralph talk about where he actually perverted a scripture. Which sometime maybe I'll get into the depths of the perversion of the scriptures of Ralph. Uh, but uh, remember, all right, let me do that again. And I want, all right, listen to that. I want to be like old, old Mary. <laughs> So don't touch him, Mary. Yeah, you, you know, uh, you, you, you don't, don't hug him. Do you people realize how wrong that is? Do you people realize how wrong that is? Not to hug and touch Ralph? As he's the Lamb of God in the midst of the people? That's because we're so caught yeah. in our mind okay. that we can't take these physical things that God gave us to demonstrate my love. To demonstrate his love? Uh, James Rice is walking in the steps of his Savior, Ralph Stair. Oh, I'm familiar with all the hugging and smooching, and I... <laughs> that doesn't impress me. No, nah, don't impress him. He still goes along with it. No, no. We're, we like to give that, but we don't want to give what's required. They like to give that, just like Ralph talked about. They don't like to give that which is required. Praise ye the Lord, and I'll give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can show forth all his praise? I'm reading from Psalm 106, verse 1. Blessed are they that keep judgment, and he that doeth righteousness at all times. Not this kind of perversion you've heard me put out again throughout this message. Ralph. And James Rice and others as we'll close this message out the way we started it. You know, we, we think we know what's going on and uh, for a period there was much talking about what was happening and what God was doing and what was wrong here and what was wrong there. But as time went on, uh, the talk became less. Thank God. Amen. 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 Because uh, we figured out that uh, we don't know. We don't know. Amen. Hallelujah. You hear the people rejoicing because they don't know? Know ye not, I told you these things, Jesus said? Remember, I told you these things? Wow. Well, that's just the truth being revealed. As they are of their father, the devil. Because just like Jesus said, they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. And when Ralph Stair died, the flood came and took them all away. And we'll continue on again in these messages. As the next one, I believe, I'll be lining up will be the, the uh, perversion of the seven thunders, and it, which also has to do with the perversion of the coming of Jesus Christ, and the perversion and corruption and twisting of the very Word of God. And may God bless this Word to your hearts, brothers and sisters. Until we meet again, is my prayer, may God's fear grip your hearts. Just like Solomon said, this is the whole duty of man, to fear God and keep his commandments. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And you know what the evil things are. I mentioned it before, I often said, Jesus said that, that these, these, all these evil things proceed out of the heart of man and defile him. So let's walk in the fear of God and the comfort of the Holy Spirit, just as the beginning of the church age did. God declares the end from the beginning. 
And we are going to be able to walk in the fear of God and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit in this time we live in, because we are approaching a time such as never was nor ever shall be since there was a nation. And God only is going to help us to prepare for that time that is so soon to come. So we just bless you, brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus the Christ is my prayer. Till we meet again. Amen.